Today we're going to set up and install the BLMAmodels.com cantilever signal bridge. This is a double track 3 over 3 uh, signal and we're using the model train technology starter kit uh, which comes with a sensor and a signal because we have the bridge so we don't need the, uh, the signal from us and then we added three signal controllers and three sensors uh, all of that connected to this one signal. We'll show you how we wired it up and configured it, um, but it's very cool and uh, we hope you enjoy that. Here's the packaging from BLMA. Uh, this model number, cantilever bridge for reference, is 4031 and uh, comes in a big plastic box. We took it out and drilled four holes. There's a template. We have a little uh, sort of base that we put this on so we can model and show you the whole configuration. Lots of fun. This is for a customer. And as soon as we finish the video, we're going to put it in the box and send it off to them. Here you can see what I did with the magnet wire that comes from the uh, gantry, uh, the cantilevered uh, light signal. So. Uh, this is magnet wire. Uh, it's all twisted together. There are four wires. It's very fine. And magnet wire is coated with lacquer, and that's what provides the insulation. So it uh, helps to keep it thin, which is the main purpose there. Um, what I did is I soldered a short length of solid core wire. Uh, let me put this down so it's not jiggling <laughs> all over the place. And uh, I color coded it. Now, all of the signals that you get from Walters and uh, if you go on eBay, they all have a common positive. And I'm not sure why that is. They all come from China. There was some kind of standard. We typically have common negative uh, in the U.S. for products, but uh, it's common positive. But uh, to keep things simple, if I used a common uh, red color, which would be positive for the red, then I'd have to use black for red for the, the color of the LED, and that might get confusing. So I just assumed and took the red. Uh, there's one red colored magnet wire, and the others are more copper color. So you can tell the difference. This is the common, and I simply soldered uh, the end of the wire to this little stub, and I did the same thing for the other three colors. Now, uh, the wire comes... Uh, sort of shaved at the end. In other words, it's, it's stripped, if you will, or the lacquer's burned off the very end of the magnet wire. So it was pretty easy. I didn't have to do anything more to do that. If you find the magnet wire breaks or something, uh, just use a hot iron, some solder, and burn it off the, the wire before you try to solder it on here. If you try to solder it on with the, the lacquer on, um, well, you'll go crazy trying to make that stick. So uh, that would be uh, the thing there. Um, and again, as I said, I use solid wire here and we'll put those on. The other thing I did is after I completed the connections, I tugged at them a little bit just to make sure they were secure. I coated them with clear uh, nail polish and uh, the nail polish is clear. Uh, it's, it, it's lacquer basically. And so it gives the insulation on this end of the uh, wire. And that's important, although on the when I connect them up to the signal controller, you'll see that they're slightly different lengths, uh, so that helps to keep the ends from touching each other. Uh, but, you know, under the layout and squishing things around, you could con uh, short these, and, uh, and of course you'll have trouble figuring out what's, what's going on. So that's why on the end of these wires I coated them with, uh, with lacquer. I've almost completed the setup. I've installed three of our signal controllers to go along with three of the four uh, signals. They're all three color signals. Uh, and what I'm going to do is show you what we do to configure this. So here's the signal controller. And I have a wire. This comes with the signal controller. I'm just going to plug this in and the light will go on. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second. On this end, we have a ground connection terminal, a latching terminal, which we're going to use today, and the detect. And so the detect is just a single yellow wire that comes from each of the four sensors. So depending on which sensor is tripped, it will trip one of the individual four signal controllers. And all I'm going to do right now is just connect up uh, these wires and uh, the brown bottom one as the controller faces you 
is the ground wire, well, the common, let's call it common because it could be plus and it could be minus. And so you just insert it there. Now, uh, just to jump ahead a minute, uh, the signal controller can make the common either positive voltage or negative voltage. Uh, we can select that and we're going to do that. The signal controller comes uh, to you set to gr common ground. And because as I mentioned before, we have a common positive, we're going to change the signal controller to common positive. And all I do on each one of these is just take the screwdriver, which we include with the signal controller, if you buy them, and then just go here and the order is uh, the common first, followed by green, just snug, not tight, it's just got to hold it in there, there's the next one, there's yellow, and lastly red at the top. Okay, and these are getting a little jumbled up here, but as I mentioned, uh, they are insulated and we won't have to worry about them. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to sp spread these out a little bit just to include my chance, uh, increase my chances of not having a short. And there we go. Now down here is the signal wire from that far sensor. And other than power, this is the only wire that you have to connect up. This will power the LEDs on the gantry and, uh, and then power in here. All right, so let's plug this in. You'll notice all of these are plugged in. These two have been set to have the blue light uh, turn off. Now, uh, when you see this in person, the blue light is not as obvious as it is on the uh, video that we're watching. Uh, so I'm going to set this uh, first and foremost to just have the blue light go off. It will go off after one minute of no touches to the button. Uh, now we're going to be setting this so it's going to stay on. Um, I could set this one down here so you can see how that works. So what we do is we press it into the setting address mode, which if you have a DC, uh, you just hold it, uh, DCC, you'd use that to set the address, but we're not going to use that today. No DCC involved anywhere here today. So now the light is blinking, so that's that uh, mode. And now if I press this 12 times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It will flash, it will stay on, and it's now started the counter. So while I'm fiddling with this one, uh, you might notice that in the background. Now, okay, we shifted the model around a little bit, and uh, what we're going to do is this last controller here that we just added the wires to, uh, controls this upper left hand side. Now even though the power's on and we got the wires connected, there's no light in that, uh, that section because uh, this is a common positive and right now this is in the default mode as it comes to you. So uh, there are a couple of things that we want to do to configure this controller and we'll just go through it, uh, see if I can get this uh, zoom in a little bit but keep that light on the upper left so you can see what's going on there. All right, so the first thing that I want to do, uh, the, the signal controller has 12 volts coming in from our, our uh, power module. And uh, it's a very flexible controller in that you can power things anywhere from 3 volts all the way up to 12 volts. So in normal mode when you get it, it's, it's just passing through the 12 volts. It's actually a little closer to 11 volts right to the wires. And uh, while there's a resistor in there and you won't damage it immediately, uh, you don't want to run it at, on 12 volts. So there's a second mode that sort of, we call it the 5 volt mode. So before we do anything, we want to put this into the 5 volt mode. Mold, mode. <laughs> so we hold the button and we put it into that set, set address mode. So there's a configuration mode also behind this. So I know for a fact that uh, five pushes of this button will set it into the five volt mode. One, two, three, four, five. And it flashes to tell me good to go. Now we haven't changed the polarity yet so the light is still off. So let's do that next. Let's go back into that configuration mode holding the button until the light comes on and then releasing it waiting till it flashes and three push buttons will get it uh, into the right polarity, one, two, three, 
and you'll see that the lights over here flashed and now we have green on, okay? Now, uh, for starter, uh, there are, uh, I'm going to put these all in three aspect mode. So it's going to go from uh, green, change to red when the signal is tripped by the sensor. In fact, we're missing a case for one of the sensors. And what will that will do? That will trip it because it's going to block the sensor. So you see the lower left one turn red as I put the case on, and it'll go through the cycle. So those are the three colors. And we have it set up so the car will trip the sensor. Now that this signal is the, the sensor back in the back here. Let's make sure, oh, you know what? Didn't go because we have to connect the signal wire. So the last thing to do, and this, the wire won't reach, but I'll show you uh, one, two, three. So the bottom terminal here is gonna get connected to this uh, wire over here and loosen that up. So we'll put this, just flip this around a little bit to get some the wires straight. Okay, put it in there. Tighten the screw. We'll just put it back onto the base over here. And we should now get this light to change to red. And there we go. Okay, so that's all there is to configuring uh, the signal controllers. And uh, so this will go through the paces. So there's two sets of timers we want to talk about. Each of the sensors has a timer that you can adjust. And there's a whole video on the signaling and the sensors and the signal controllers. Uh, just a reminder here, a repeat, uh, once the car passes, you can set it to start it with immediate mode, and then was the sensor will go off immediately, or you can slow it down, what we call timeout, so that after the train passes, maybe 10 or 15 seconds later, then it releases uh, the, the track. That will then start a second timer, which is built into the signal controller, and that controls how fast the lights go between the, the color. So it'll immediately go to red, so we'll go over there, all right? And it'll stay red until the, the track is clear, not occupied. We have it set to immediate mode. So as soon as I move out of this, uh, the sensor is now off and it'll go through the three stages. I have the time set pretty fast uh, so that we're not wasting video time, if you will, just wa waiting for the color to change, all right? So the way I have this set up is, um, Simply that the train will hit the first sensor, continues on, hits the second sensor, and then uh, continue on its way, and they will go through their paces. So this one went very fast all the way back to green. Uh, this one will go a little bit slower, and we can adjust that, as I said, on the signal controller. All right. And likewise, on this side here, we have that one, and we have that one, and now you can see the signal's going pretty, pretty quickly through their paces, all right? So the next thing I'm going to do is change uh, this behavior aspect. It's three aspects. Uh, the next couple are uh, using the yellow light to flash or stay on during various changes between red and green. So let's do uh, four, and the only way, the simplest way, or the only way, but it's, very, it's simple, is to just to push this. So it's three aspect, three push buttons. We already had that set up. I'm now going to push it uh, four times. One, two, three, four. And now the behavior of just this signal is going to be a little bit different. So we'll trip it with the car. We'll pull it out. And you'll see that it goes to yellow as it did before, but then it blinks yellow, and then it switches to green. And again, you can speed up and slow that down. All right, so that was four. One, two, three, four, five. And it will count them, two, three, four, five, to confirm that that's what we want. Uh, run the car in front of there, and, and back out again. Now both lights are on, and now it changes to green and the light's on. And then the last version of this is one, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll pull the car in front, move it out of the way. 
So you can see uh, it changes, to, uh, adds the yellow, then it blinks the yellow, then it changes to green with the blinking yellow, and then it's off to green. All right. There's one more ver uh, aspect with these three. Uh, it's seven, and it's uh, it, the fades between three aspects. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but we have these sensors aimed at each other. And I just moved this car. Of course, this sensor went off, but this one didn't. And they're faced right at each other. And so you can see the precision sensor is not tripping this other signal. All right, so let's look at the behavior of this uh, choice seven. You'll see the lights fade from red to yellow and to, to green. And let's trip it again so you can see that. So that it's, it's just a, a fade from each aspect rather than instantaneous. And uh, so that's, that's the choice there. OK, so and we can put that behavior on any of these. We can have them just three aspects here and have this one be six stages uh, for further down the track. Um, however you want to set it up, you just push the button on the various controller. And that's all there is to that. Now, because we have three on three here, we want to add latching because what we want to do is to increase the, acti uh, the activity here. In other words, not let this uh, section of track go to green until this one is turned to green. In other words, I'm sort of babbling about this, but it's the clear, the block ahead is clear to proceed. So until the block ahead is clear to proceed, this one shouldn't turn green. It should stay at whatever the last aspect was. In this case, it'll be yellow, all right? And I'm going to put it on the flashing mode, which is five. One, two, three, four, five. So that when we connect up the latching, you'll see the yellow light will, will be blinking to indicate that the block ahead is not clear. All right, so on our cantilever gantry, the first sensor is this one on the left, and the block ahead is, is this uh, signal controller uh, by that sensor. And so to, to connect these using latching, it's really simple. We, when this one is active, in other words, when this sensor is active, we want it to trip the latch on this. So in order to do that, we're going to connect another short piece of wire into the detect line see if I could do it this way. Just going to insert this wire in there and tighten it down. And then loop it around to the latch, which is the middle terminal back here. All right. And that's all there is to it. We've got a, another wire uh, for the, the far track. So we'll just connect that up. And then we'll swoop this around so you can see the whole thing. Oh, by the way, uh, we talked about the blue light. So these three blue lights are off. This is the last one we configured. We did not configure it for the blue light off. Let's do that now. Hold the button until it gets into that config mode. All right, and 12 pushes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It'll flash, and then it'll go back on, but one minute later, it will shut off. All right, I'm going to connect this wire and then spin this around so you can see how latching works. All right, let's take a look at how uh, latching works. So what we're going to do, imagine a train is coming down on the right-hand side track, and it's going to trip this one. I'm going to back that car up just to do that. And then it's, this train is going to keep going, and it's going to trip the next sensor uh, and it's going to stay there for a while. So there's the first trip. So train comes along, train comes along, trips the second one, and I'm going to leave that car there. And now what you saw, and again, I have this set up pretty fast, that this light changed to yellow and will stay yellow and not go to green. Remember, this sensor isn't tripped at the moment, all right? Uh, now, if another train came along here and tripped it, um, that would change to red, which it did there. It will flip, now the train backed up, let's say, or got out of the way, it'll go to yellow, but it will not go to green until the train ahead clears the sensor. So I'm gonna just move it out of the way from in front of the sensor. You'll see this one change, start to change to yellow, go through its sequence, 
and you'll also see this one go through its change. Uh, so now it changed to yellow, this one changed to green. So that's, uh, that's how latching works. Now I have a different uh, aspect behavior here, so you can see it. It's the same, same technique. Train hits here, uh, train keeps going along, hits the next one. It stays in the block ahead. Uh, there are more than one aspect change here, and it's going to stay. Whoops. Let's, let's just do this. I moved the train out of the way. Let's start over again. So there's red, there's red, and the train, I'll have to hold it there. It's rolling back, and it will just stay in front. And now there, it went from yellow to yellow blinking, and it will stay yellow blinking until the train in front gets out of the way, clears the block to proceed. Uh, it changed to green. The block ahead goes through its sequence. So that's latching, and, and you can put them all into just three aspect mode or all the blinking and flashing that you want, uh, but it adds real uh, interest and, and uh, excitement to the railroad. So this, uh, this is the cantilever four light, three, three over three light uh, cantilever. Uh, we used one starter kit, uh, which comes with the power module, one sensor, one block signal, and then we added three, uh, sorry, uh, signal controllers, pardon me, and we added three more signal controllers and three more sensors. And that's it. That's all you need. It comes with all the wires, uh, everything out of the box that I did here. Uh, I didn't need any extra wires. It comes with the screwdriver and ready to go. Um, and you just set the, the prison decision sensors to detect the track. And uh, so that's a lot of fun, and we hope you enjoyed that.